everybody. Welcome to episode three of Top 8 Podcast. I'm Nikki, and with me is my co-host, Tyler. How's it going again this week? Uh, it's going well this week. I'm actually I'm really excited for our show this week. Um, <laughs> lots of exciting news about TFT in general this week. Uh, yeah. They uh, 10.4 is out, and um, it's a pretty good patch so far. It's all right. Um, but the big news was they announced set three stuff where we're going to be doing galaxies and those seem like they could be cool that sounds i mean like i'm super excited just because it has so much like potential and possibility so you know yeah 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 uh excited to see like what they come out with you know yeah uh and yeah so for this week we're going to be doing a deep dive into some sins and the main reason we're doing this is just because we saw a lot of um posts on the Reddit page and people not necessarily knowing what exactly some sin is. So we thought we wanted to do just, you know, like a short video in between like the during the patches to sort of explain what exactly that is. And a lot of that we'll just be doing a bot review again. Uh, we've received a lot of good attention from that. So we wanted to continue that conversation. And of course, we'll be touching briefly the patch notes as per usual. Yeah, uh, this episode might look a little bit different from the last. We're going to try a little more uh, thorough of a VOD review this time and a little bit less conversation after, hopefully. So uh, I think that will hopefully be a good change. But um, yeah. but yeah, in the last episode, actually, we talked about uh, some sin a little bit. We had, uh, you know, that possible transition out of Woodland and into some sin. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to see, um, in Flurrier, who is a, uh, you know, top NA challenger player. Um, he's often up there in the top 20 and stuff. Uh, we found a game from him that we really liked that we thought was a nice example of what you can do with some sin. And, uh, so we wanted to, to show that off. Um, and it was again, because we saw on, uh, I saw, I believe both on Reddit and on Twitter, uh, people asking, what is some sin? We talked about in the last game, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, there was some confusion previously in some tournaments and things like that where announcers weren't sure what some sin was. And it just seems like a comp that maybe goes a little bit under the radar. And uh, part of the reason for that, I think, is because it's not as structured a comp as some other things are. So we actually have um, an image here that I wanted to pull up. Um, and these are four different Sumsin comps from four different guides. And they all have some like similar core elements, but you know, there are three or four units different in some of these comps. Um, and I think that can make it a little bit hard for people who are newer to the game sometimes who want these like more structured exact comps where they're playing like the exact same eight units, uh, you know, and the exact same synergies every time to, to really figure it out where some sense is more of a, um, kind of balancing act between like getting the best units you can and having like some of the better small synergies, like the two, two costs or the two unit synergies rather, um, so it can be really map dependent because Kiana allows you to play things like cloud or, um, you know, mountain, ocean, any of those yeah. things. And yeah. it's just really good because sometimes you might not even find all the summoners, for example, and you can play wardens instead. It just gives you a lot of flexibility. So it might just be more difficult if you are trying to follow a comp guide. So what we're trying to do in this episode is trying to clear that up and hopefully explain that you have a lot of wiggle room while you're playing this um, Sumsin comp. Exactly. And I just wanted to show real quick, this is, um, uh, these four comps are all from different guides, but uh, I pulled something from, there's a website, it's uh, kda.gg, which I think is really neat. Um, it seems to be just like aggregating a lot of data and then it gives things like win percentages and, um, you know, for individual units and comps and things like that. And some sins is pulled up on there and, and that's this. And if you look at it, the first comp um, here, uh, that wants you to transition off of uh, I believe is that actually it's a little bit small for me. Hold on. <laughs> uh, but it wants you, it actually, so when you look at it, I think it wants you to go from, 
is that like ocean or cloud kiana in the first one and then in the second in the end comp or whatever the end game comp there it's mountain kiana with malphite like i think there's so much diversity in units that this kda.gg website has trouble picking up like an exact comp for some sins it's just uh, seeing uh, like the last the one on the left is the electric lux combo with zed so you get that like right. three electric comp yeah but then the one on the right um yeah that's that that top the core comp there is six summoners there's only one assassin in it it's zed <laughs> but that's what they have listed as summoner assassin i think and I think that just speaks to like how diverse a comp this is mm -hmm. that they're like not able to aggregate this well is my guess. So I just kind of yeah. wanted to show that off. Like if if you're not familiar with this comp, if you've been confused by this comp, so has this website that's aggregating data, right? Uh, so yeah. it's not, you know, I think what we want to try to do is maybe just provide a little bit more clarity. Uh, and we're going to do that with the help of Enflurrier and this Vaughn. Yeah, and just wanted to say thank you again to him for letting us use this video. I've included his link to his Twitch channel and to his Twitter page on the chat. If you can't see it, it's um, in Flurrier, and you can just type it at the end of Twitter or Twitch. Um, he was super nice about it, so definitely go check his um, check out his um, stream and also just show him some support. He's a really good player. I watch him a lot sometimes, you know, so definitely... And he's funny, so <laughs> he definitely is. worth a watch. Yeah. No, he's a, he's a really good watch. He's like a nice balance yeah. of like personable, funny, uh, while also just like having some really nice insight into the game. So yeah. you kind of get the the full package there uh, when you when you're checking out Inflarier. Um I did want to say we're gonna start at uh, round um, one four here. Uh, in part because Inflarier is also on YouTube, so check him out on YouTube. Uh, but he was posting a YouTube video during the during the early rounds of this game. So we're just gonna cut that out. Um, he did go into the first carousel, which we missed, looking specifically for a rod, which he was able to get. Uh, and so now we're just gonna finish up the end of the minion rounds and go from there. All right. You can see he gets another rod here uh, from one, three. Yes. And he's able to get an early Azir, so consider taking that. And of course, he needs like a starting sort of um, component of units to play so that his um, early game is in two weeks, so he picks up the Woodlands. Let's give me one second here. Oh. It's getting a yeah. little bit, uh, yeah, it's a little bit choppy. Uh -huh. Let me Sorry. just, yeah, let me just refresh. We'll do a little refreshing. Sometimes the... Uh, Twitch video player. A little bit problematic. <laughs> oh, we got mad. <laughs> I clearly I should subscribe to Influrrier so I don't get this ad. Uh, if you're watching this and you subscribe to Influrrier, you won't get the ad. Advice there. Let's see if we come back with a less laggy video now. Not yet, huh? Uh, try turning the uh, quality down. Yeah, it's like 1080, do 720. Oh. Well, yeah, that's good. There we go. Hopefully that looks okay still. That's perfect. All right, jumping back to the game. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on 2-1 already. Um, trying to make that gold increment so he sold everything on his board to get to 20 which is really great because he can keep that azir without uh compromising any of his econ and he manages to win that uh first two one round which is really good so he sets him off to a great start yeah yeah and he's got this woodland start um here you know he's got the the maokai too um he's got a second uh ivern on the bench um, you can see he's holding that Azir, and in this situation, um, he's on 27 gold. So if he sold the Azir, he'd be able to get to 30 here. Um... Yeah, and also keep in mind the positioning of his uh, Maokai and his Ivern. Uh, there's different ways they can position those two units, and uh, depending on the 
other unit on the other person's board, that positioning is really good just because the Maokai will walk up and then the Ivern won't get hit, I believe. Is that correct? Um, yeah, if you're talking about like Nasus positioning. Yes, yeah, yeah in that uh, sort of situation. You can split if you... There, I think there are a couple of ways to do it, but one is if you just make sure that they're two tiles apart uh, mm -hmm. since, and that Maokai is where the Nasus is. Uh, they won't, since Ivern's a ranged unit, he won't walk. Um, but I yeah. do want to point out, instead of selling that Azir to go up to 30 gold, he bought out the shop, um, which just is him putting a lot of early value on Azir, right? Rather than getting mm -hmm. Econ, and he's rewarded with a second Azir here, uh, which is really nice. But just if, if you were debating, like, can you ever keep a three cost unit in the early game you can you just need to know why right and he obviously azir is uh pretty strong this is on the previous patch 10.3 right so yeah uh, and azir was super good then and he has two rods so he could either go jewel gauntlet or uh ginsu's which are both super great on azir yeah yeah um, and then oh sorry go ahead i was gonna say in the worst case you could even play a death cap on azir uh, if you somehow like missed items entirely, right? So like, you're, <laughs> you're in an okay spot with Azir here for the mid game at least, right? Yeah, and he chooses to make that vein just because it's not going to cost him any money. So uh, he can sell the extra Nasus and the Kogma during the carousel round, and he doesn't have to worry about potentially losing uh, this round. It just makes him a little stronger. Right. Yeah, you yeah. won't see him keep that vein long term. But it's a two-star unit, uh, which is going to be stronger than the majority of one-star units, even with synergies. Um, yeah, and I mean, he can like just that. play it without losing anything, so it's like, why not? Right, it's free there. Yeah. I so know. He's... Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I know on that carousel, he said he went into it wanting a bow, so it looks like he's prioritizing, like you said, Rage Blade on uh, Azir as mm -hmm. an early item. So he doesn't end up with Bo, unfortunately. Um, and you can see here he's going to sell for interest to keep the Nasus for the future. Yeah, and then he decides to make the Jewel Gauntlet, which is a good item on mm -hmm. Azir, of course. And if he does choose to make a Ginsu's later on, he still has that extra rod. And taking out the Bane lets him get to that um, 40 gold increment. Otherwise, if he didn't, he would have to sell Ivern and Nasus. And, he, you know, he's keeping the Ivern in hopes of, like, getting a pair. Uh, sorry, a two-star, right? Yeah. Right. And a lot of people, I think, now are leveling to five at 2-5. Um, you can see his opponent has here. Uh, mm -hmm. He opts not to. I don't think there would, be, would have been a lot for him to gain. He could have played... You know a second azir but he's already in a reasonably strong position for the mid game here he's not on yeah. a win streak so he's not he doesn't need to protect that um and you know once he hits that third azir um, he's going to be pretty strong so and a lot of this is just like looking and scouting through your lobby seeing how strong you are in comparison to other people like if you level here how much stronger are you going to get and right. are you trying to win streak? I mean, he's already lost that streak, so there's no point. So he can sort of trade that health for um, more econ. Exactly, yeah. That econ's going to help out, um, you know, into mid game and late game. Mm -hmm. And he's, uh, you, you see, like, his loss there wasn't uh, a terrible loss. He's at 91 health still, and he's lost two rounds. So he's not taking big losses. He's just, you know, he's got his ear out there. He's got uh, Woodland Frontline. Uh, you know, with the druids regenerating health. And you can kind of see the positioning with um, Woodland Druid right now. It's kind of like what you were talking about as far as, like, the anti nasus positioning where they're spread apart mm -hmm. far enough that... Um, let's actually see if Nasus goes off here, but um, they should only have one of them get hit by Nasus here. And that's right, not and good for just Nasus, but Nasus represents, like, a, a two-hex ability, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's just something to consider since um there's a lot of little um little things you can do in the game to sort of help yourself while you're playing yeah, yeah. just trying to turn those you know take those small advantages where you can get them and snowball them into big advantages in the late game exactly that's one yeah. of the ways you can do it 
He grabs the Renekton there. Um, my guess would be for Desert. Yeah, he's um, going to plug it in here. I mean, like, for Desert and also just the fact that he got an extra gold, so he might as well pick up a unit that could help him have a synergy. Right. For you wouldn't have, yeah. yeah, like you're saying, you would not have bought that Renekton if that would have cost you, if that would have taken you from, you know, taken you from 50 to 49 gold and cost yeah. you interest. You would have just left the Renekton, but... yeah. So it positions correctly, puts the Renekton on the side, and typically the Renekton will do a like a spin, you know, to hit everyone. So he can potentially hit like two to three units. So it's really good for him to be on the edge. So he's hitting all of them at once with his um, ability. Yeah, and so we're still doing pretty well, and gets another sparring glove, and he picks up a. Uh, Kindred here, just because it's not costing him any money, and it's interesting because you can also think about it this way that um, Azir items can also somewhat go on Kindred, and if he chooses not to play Azir, he could play Kindred potentially. Yeah, when you're in this position, um, like you don't necessarily want to level here. It's a weird interval, right? Mm -hmm. um, so theoretically, he could sell. He could have sold down in some way to level, but instead just buying out the shop and in particular picking up units that are strong in the event that you see more of them, you know, in the next round, uh, he's going to go to six in the next round, I believe. And I think he'll roll down as well. Most people do roll down at six. So you'll have that Kindred there. If you hit two more Kindreds, then you've got, you know, two star Kindred and maybe you hit some more. Uh, rangers maybe you hit some more shadows maybe you hit some inferno units whatever you have that like option you're kind of hedging your mm -hmm. bet even though this looks like an azir game you know there's no need to get greedy and think the only thing i can play here is azir right right yeah and he picks up this brahm and brahm while uh some people might not think is really good he is actually a great unit especially for 10.4 as well you know with that glacial um buff and his um, ability power is just really great in terms of like blocking out any sort of like pop damage, any, you know. So picks everything up, levels to seven. And I just want to make a note that while he was playing this game, he did say that he was doing it for fun. So like typically you would not level to seven and then spend all your gold. But I think he felt maybe he was in a position of sort of power just because he got that as year twos and also karma. So he could definitely like potentially spike. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that unreasonable of a play necessarily. Like, he has a zero two, and this is letting him put in mystics. And in, I mean, the vast majority of units cast spells when they reach their maximum mana, right? So you're you're getting the benefit of mystic uh, a couple of rounds earlier than you might have been able to. Um, and you can see he like sold everything else to get gold for interest. Um, he mm -hmm. came off the kindreds there. Uh, you can also see though that he sold, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. He sold uh, LeBlanc early, right? So we we talked last week about like that transition off of woodlands, and he didn't sell out all of his woodland units. He just sold off LeBlanc, so he's off woodlands, but he's still playing druid for some like front line and some tankiness, right? Yeah, because like the woodland units aren't doing much at this point. Putting her right. in versus not isn't really worth it, especially if you can put in a mystic instead. I, I mean, I only said that I wouldn't have leveled to seven just because I'm a little more greedy and I wanted to get that accumulation of gold before. Like I personally would have um, leveled after carousel, but that that's just me, you know? <laughs> right. No, I mean, yeah. and that's that's the more standard play for sure. Mm -hmm. Like more people are going to do that more often. Um, I thought this play was was interesting. You know, it's not. Um, he's still in an okay place in terms of gold. He's on twenty two gold. He's on a four win streak. If this allows him to continue to streak, um, and to pick up some of these earlier wins, so that you know his streak ends up being longer, then in some ways the gold might balance out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If he had what it comes down to is if he had not leveled the seven and he had lost those couple of rounds there uh because he didn't have mystics in you know and that's something again you have to tell based off your lobby yeah and scouting and getting that karma early is just really great because karma and azir just go together so well and he's able to get that bow off of carousel so you know 
immediate Ginsu. So that Azir is going to be super strong from like three one three sorry three four all the way to stage four. He gets another really huge shop. So yeah, I mean this is like your like summoner sin starter pack, right? You've mm -hmm. got you've got Yorick, um, you've got Annie who doesn't make it into a lot of end comps for summoner sin because you end up hitting uh zed and then wanting that in a lot of cases but in the event you don't hit zed or you just want to play like three summoners in the meantime any one is pretty strong like tibbers is an extra body mm -hmm. um and she does decent damage so just having her as an early inclusion here it doesn't cost him gold to hold her like we kind of talked about so you know i think uh a really yeah. nice shop that kind of helps to point you in that, again, summon or send direction in this game. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to mention it earlier, but you know how last week we talked about uh, deciding on a team comp? A lot of this game is just seeing that sort of transition from Woodland deciding to stay with Azir, deciding when to give up on Kindred. And I think a lot of that is just um, understanding the game and seeing how your different paths can like branch off. So like here, obviously he chose to do Azir because he was closer to that and he had better items for Azir. So, right. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he got Azir earlier, so he was able to like game plan for Azir a little mm -hmm. bit earlier in terms of the items he's getting off carousel, uh, other items that he's picking up and keeping from the shop uh, that are more complimentary for Azir. Um, and I think like one thing that that is occurring to me here is like he's playing these wardens, right? Um, mm -hmm. and I, I think sometimes people grab these warden units and then they think that they're, you know, then beholden to play synergies to go with those wardens. Like I've got Brom mm -hmm. too, so now I have to play Glacial or, you know, Nasus is leading me towards light. But realistically, like in this set, your front line's pretty much always just some kind of wardens, right? Like, uh, after Woodlands or unless you're playing Berserker, you're playing some kind of warden, so using those as a direction may not be as useful as the surrounding units, right? Yeah. Here we grab another Just, Yorick. Yeah, awesome. another Yorick, which is really good. And um what am I gonna say? And keep in mind how much value you're getting out of Mystic on stage three. A really good tactic to sort of be stronger during stage three is to play Mystic just because people aren't scaling high enough in damage just yet and you can sort of mitigate a lot of the damage that you're taking by playing that two mystic yeah that's kind of what i was getting at i think i might have rambled off earlier but when i was saying like <laughs> everyone casts a spell basically right like mm -hmm. the vast majority of champions are doing something that could be mitigated by mystics and uh and then you get a zed here which is pretty nice we, <laughs> we missed it a little bit earlier but a couple of rounds back he had the opportunity he's holding that azir for possible future azir three but a little bit ago he had the opportunity to sell azir uh, and Annie for Econ, uh, which he stated he should have done. He felt like that was a mistake. So he doesn't really want to hold Azir for the possible future Azir 3 if it's costing him income. Right? Yeah, and also just because most of his team is still just, you know, one-star Woodlands, sorry, two-star Woodlands, so he needs right. to upgrade it to some extent before considering, okay, do I want to do, like, a three-star unit first? And, you know, um, he's able to hit, like, an early Zed and an early um, Yorick. So, obviously, yes. he's going down this route. And he's still doing pretty well. You know, lucky Azir, <laughs> Azir pop on the carry. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that is the power of Azir is <laughs> he can sometimes just get the random soldiers onto your back line um, and pop your carry right off the bat. Yeah uh and here, yeah here we get kiana mm -hmm. and he also decided to make bramble vest mm -hmm. and yeah. the sparring glove and just because like making i believe it's titans right i don't make the items so i forget uh making S sparring with a uh, chain vest that is uh frozen titans. gauntlet no 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 frozen gauntlet's gone i, it, I think it's titans um it's not titans is it, bow it's not Oh, no, no, it's Frozen Gauntlet still. It's not gone. It's reworked. Oh, it's not gone? Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's uh, I just don't make name. that item, so it's like, I don't even remember anymore. It's not a but, very um, good item. It's, <laughs> it's compared instead to of, the value of Bramble uh, Vest and, like, Sparring Glove, it's just not worth making two of those items. 
No, yeah. for sure, for sure. Bramble Best yeah. is kind of going up in value. There are, I think it was tweaked. It's it's been uh, buffed a little bit recently, and there are also just like a lot of auto heavy comps going around where. You know, you're seeing like ranger comps and other things that are going to take more damage from the Bramble Vest. Um, and Frozen Gauntlet, just to clarify, uh, still exists. And I think that's what it's called. But it used to, when you dodged, spread a like AOE slow sort of thing. Now it's after, I think it's the auto attack after an ability freezes a unit in place. Like it stuns a unit for a little bit. So it's good on Ezreal or Kindred, but not as good as other items on them, basically. Yeah, I, I not, apologize. I just it's just such a bad item that <laughs> it's not why I don't even played, think about right? it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he loses pretty badly this round against Shadow, which is understandable. Six Shadow is Six uh, Shadow, a little yeah. a little scary, but um he's able to slowly econ and sort of slowly transition his units when he decides to roll down at eight which is really good yeah and i know here in this round uh, he was debating and in the last round he debates going eight uh on that round going to level eight or uh whether he should just continue to econ and like slow roll to eight uh to try to get to nine uh or to hard roll at eight so he's got a couple of considerations there one is do we immediately go to eight uh, to try to be strong, to try to... I think that was our first loss in a while, right? So we'd be trying to continue yeah. our win streak. Uh, or do we go... Try to go to 9 by way of like slow rolling to 8 and then looking for an opportunity to level to 9, uh, which is going to give us access to some more uh, you know, 5-cost units and things like that. Uh, and then... Or when we go to eight, do we spend the gold that we have to roll down and two star a bunch of our units, you know, and and try to have like a really strong level eight? So he's kind yeah. of debating between those things and head in the. And like, if it were me, and I believe just because there are so many one one star, one two star one cost units in the game or in the field right now, that's why I wouldn't necessarily choose to go to nine so fast, just because. I need some type of economy to, you know, I have pairs of Yorick, I have a Zed and a Kiana. I, I should try to change my comp a little. Yeah. Um, and there are, I think, good reasonings for doing a couple of things there, but I know that uh, he ultimately seemed to like the idea of, you know, the hard roll at eight. Uh, better um, because he again thought it would fill out his comp better give him that stronger in game um, and he thought he had you know HP to spare basically that he could take some losses here and that he would still be uh, in a good position for the end game so he can be a little bit more greedy with that economy and level a little mm -hmm. bit faster yeah so he's at level 8 now he manages to pick up Cloud with Kiana just because of the map and Janna and he kept that Nocturne in during the last round because he could and his board was filled up. Um, if you sell the unit that's on your board at the end of the round, it won't harm you. I know before it would like take the unit out, but he had already won. So um, he could pick up that Janna before uh, the next shop rolled over, basically. Yeah, and I just wanted to pause here for a second to talk because this is the first real time that we're seeing, like, I mean... We're starting to see the comp come together, mostly on the bench, right? We've got summoners mm -hmm. and assassins all up on our bench. Um, but here's like one of the first kind of big, I think, some sin related decisions where we decided to play Janna over Soraka, like you said, right? Because we want, mm -hmm. we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's a cloud map. We already want to play Kiana. Kiana is a strong individual unit. Kiana is... Uh, an assassin which is going to help you know enable our zed a little bit later on uh and so even though i think soraka is maybe more widely preferred than jana when it comes to just like any mystic uh i don't know i think i think as of recently more people are valuing like jana that could be yeah maybe maybe that's more of a mindset mindset switch but uh, Soraka is also cheaper so there's like mm -hmm. there's sometimes when you want to play her for the the cheaper cost but but here we want to play Janna because it's going to give us that cloud buff um 
you know, and again, that's part of what we were talking about earlier, where you're trying to play a lot of these like two unit synergies um, to help strengthen the overall comp. Yeah. And if you're looking through the lobby and you like right now, it, um, Rangers are still super popular and, you know, Cloud at least does some type of mitigation against that. Yeah. Absolutely. Cloud is a decent mitigation with which players. is why they should add more cloud units but you know we're moving on to set three but <laughs> and that's really that's why john is the best unit in the game like i've said <laughs> all along um yeah so we we do continue on there yeah and i would say that the lobby itself isn't super strong either i'm not seeing a lot of punishment in terms of other people punishing like having so many one cost units on the one cost two star units on the board, which right. is, you know, good. Yeah. And then, uh, so we're finally at stage four chickens. <laughs> and so uh, definitely he's decided to sell the uh, woodlands, put in the units that he's actually going to play so that he can have some board space because he doesn't want to sell anything on his board right now and pick up that ocean Lux. Yeah. Lux is. Uh... In particular, Ocean Lux, I really like in some sins because, uh, and he mentions it, but Zed makes pretty good use of Ocean, even to mm -hmm. Ocean, and Lux is, you know, a strong unit on her own, um, so it's a definitely a decent possibility here. Um, yeah, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, we, um, I was going to ask you, actually, about mm -hmm. these items that we hit here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So briefly a lot pause. of different items. And uh, so we got the belt, uh, the spatula, and the sparring glove, right? Yes. Yep. Sparring glove. Yeah. And I mean, I'm looking here. It could be trap claw or trap claw and assassin spat. I'm definitely not making glacial or uh, berserker. Right. And I think... You know, I don't want a dead item, so I'll try to make, you know, two items out of whatever is on the board. So uh, judging from that, I think the best conclusion is just Trap Claw and uh, Assassin. Right, yeah, we don't have any open item components on the board, so we don't have any mm -hmm. opportunity to make anything there. Um, and I just wanted to stop here because we've talked about it a fair amount in the last couple episodes, but this is 5-1, so these item components that are on the bench... These are the last item components we're basically going to see for the game, right? Uh, everything else is going to be full items from here on out. Uh, so we do want to make items with these. And like you're saying, uh, I think you that's a, a, an accurate and good assessment of uh, what best we can do with these items. We can avoid playing an additional assassin. We've already got two assassin, assassins, so we're going to see Assassin Spat give us that third assassin and the assassin bonus for... Uh, yeah units we get yeah many and zeros. also um for regarding picking up the lux i would say that if it's like a steel lux i wouldn't pick it up but just because it's ocean your only other better lux options are electric or cloud and you're not gonna wait to see if you hit that and if you have the ability to go to nine it's better to pick up that ocean lux than to hopefully ro roll the roulette, right? To f hopefully play like another unit, um, just because the ocean is pretty good. Alternatively, you could pick up like hopefully maybe like a Taric, but you know, you already have the luck, so we might as well just hold it for now and see. And he decides to put the sparring glove on Zed just because um, the the two sparring gloves combined together are really good for crit on Zed himself. So it's a good like midway sort of full item for Zed. Yeah, the crit is good on Zed. Um, if you get electric, obviously, the more crits you get, the more electric damage he pumps out. But just in general, having crit on an assassin is good. But also, like, Zed, Zed makes good use of a lot of items, right? Like, you often put defensive, item on, defensive items on Zed because you want him to, you know, persist for as long as possible and uh, to put out as many clones as possible and that's often like your win condition in a, a comp with zed um not that it's with zed one the win condition for this comp but mm -hmm. uh you know he just he makes good use of a lot of different items uh so thieves gloves are good for that too and the 
the inherent dodge on thieves gloves help him out with continue to exist i just wanted to go we just did um some scouting around and we uh i did a little bit of repositioning um so especially with less players in the lobby now that scouting is going to be a little bit more valuable we're going to see like a little bit of, of repositioning um we're continuing to make use of the cloud hexes uh which given their position doesn't seem like overly risky uh, we're not like entirely mispositioned or anything to use them mm -hmm. uh but i think some people might have like backlined these units at this point mm -hmm. i know a lot of people abandon the spaces but in Flurrier continues to do that uh to use them uh here and i think cloud in particular because it's a defensive space uh can sort of continue to be more beneficial even if you're like a little bit out of position right because you get yeah, that dodge and and he chooses to play the Leona for now, which is a super good standalone unit. Just, you know, it's like the best one cost, basically. And he gets that Warden buff for Braum. And then um, he's also repositioned the Yorick just because he's an assassin, so he's going to jump. So he's right. moved them in. So if he's in range to hit someone, he's not going to jump. So he scouted the lobby to check that. Yes, and um, Leona is also going to give him Lunar here, which... Yeah, um, I think it's pretty good in some sense. Again, you're playing assassins, so they make good use of crit. Uh, you're playing Zed, who tends to draw out the length of rounds, which will give you more lunar stacks. Uh, so in both cases, I think those, uh, you know, lunar is pretty beneficial here. And again, it's another two unit synergy that you're able to squeeze in um, because you're already playing Karma for Mystic, so you just add that one unit. Say. Yeah, and also. See how he isn't choosing to play the um, Kha'Zix over the Kiana? A lot of that is understanding the value and how much Desert can bring you. At this stage and point in time, Desert debuff isn't going to do much, but that Cloud is going to be super helpful against, you know, like Ranger players, for example, and it's just good in general. So um, there's a reason why he isn't choosing to pick, like, a one-star Kha'Zix over, like, a Kiana. Like, they're both the same, but the Cloud is obviously much better. Right, and I think when you say it's obviously much better, I don't, I don't know. Sorry, not obviously, but just the fact that I don't think desert is super important this late in the game because there are better things that you could pl be playing, and I think cloud has more value in this situation. And while you're playing the game, you should also think about like which is better at this point in time. Is it doing me any good at this point in time? If it's not could I be playing something better? Like that kind of thing. Right. And so, I mean, I would agree that I think cloud is the better choice here over desert. Um, my thoughts on as to why are uh, in part that Azir is, I think probably still the bulk of our damage. And a lot of his damage is magic damage from his soldiers. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So he doesn't do a ton of physical damage and desert obviously is a debuff that helps with uh, physical damage against armor. Um, so having cloud for the dodge for the defensive benefit, uh, versus desert for the offensive benefit when we don't have any units that take great advantage of that offensive benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think on the current patch, uh, with Zed, you got an attack speed buff, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but I think like desert's interesting with zed because you end up getting so many little zed guys and he's got good auto attack damage but we're on zed one here who's not much of a factor right yeah so, and he's not your carry right now so not you're not you're not trying to make your zed super strong you're trying to make sure that your zero is popping off and that you know your yorick exactly. goes off as well so you know that kind of thing and you can also try to position the yorick uh, trap claw is really good against kindred so if you're able to have kindred pop the trap claw she's a stun for a good uh i don't sorry i forget how long it is but she's stunned for a good bit and that way your team can um go off before like kindred starts going off again yeah that's definitely a good point so let's uh yeah. let's continue on hey scouting really good And then this is a classic um, shadow comp. Yeah, kind of if you've been playing the last couple of patches. Uh, Still really good. He is amazing this patch. So <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of six shadow going around. Yeah. Um, so you'll be aware of the strength of that. Mm -hmm. It is strong. And so here. And this is. Oh no! Go ahead. I was just gonna say we're we're hanging out. Uh, we we have we didn't roll down at eight a ton. I think in part because we hit 
you know, good upgrades pretty early. We're on strong units. And so we're going to look to go to nine here and you finish up uh, the comp with, you know, an upgraded Zed, uh, you know, possibly being able to get that Lux in. Yeah, and uh, just sort of thinking about trading the Econ that you get with your health, he's been in first place the entire time and everyone else has been dying, so he can take advantage of that to sort of take his time to level. And since he's fighting a bot, he's not going to take as much damage as if he were fighting the actual um, team itself. Yeah, here he's in kind of another... Samson nice. versus Samson sort of yeah, situation. Yeah, I don't think yeah. the other guy has Zed, but I think he's... <laughs> he's got a, I think he's got Nocturne in there waiting on Zed, I mm. assume. Uh, but yeah. I mean, granted, this guy's units are all upgraded and his isn't, so... Yeah, and you can also see, like, that guy's playing Malphite, too. Like, that's yeah. a, <laughs> it's a big unit that you can opt to play. And he sells out of Kha'Zix here. Um, I think he's decided that he would rather play that Lux for 2 Ocean than Kha'Zix mm -hmm. to complete Desert in the late game. Yeah, just, you know, Desert isn't scaling or doing much at this right. point in time. Yeah. And he picks up another... Um, Ramble Vest, and I believe that he should have picked up the uh, GA. He also says that later on after he's already picked, made the choice, just because um, York does a whole lot more with the GA versus if he doesn't. It's not like a core item you need on him, but it's definitely something that'll make your team a lot stronger. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would consider GA as... You don't have oh, to I, itemize sorry, York, I just mean but... like it's not core for playing... Um, some sins but if you're gonna play yorick you should play yeah him with the ga yeah. yeah if you can play ga what you're just trying to do is get as many casts as possible out of york so you want yeah. you know defensive items for him to live long um you can play other things with like some mana on him as well uh you know things that'll help him get an earlier cast or a mm -hmm. better second cast but realistically you're just looking he's, he's a frontline unit so you want him to tank that damage and continue to cast yeah and he's able to get all of his upgrades this round. He chooses to sell the Azir, even though he made it a two-star, just so he could play that Lux. And uh, right. that way, you know, hopefully he can have a higher chance of winning. While he doesn't during this round, it does make him stronger. Yeah, and he locked for that Janna there because his last upgrade is just, you know, two-star Janna at this point. Yeah. Um, And what you said is right, like, chasing three star azir versus playing guaranteed two star lux like mm -hmm. you should take your guaranteed upgrade almost every time right you don't need three star azir for this comp to be viable it's already like a decent viable comp he's already in top four um you can see him here like doing some positioning to try to avoid zephyr and, and or kindred uh, yeah and he decides to move the uh, azir back which is really important typically azir and um Karma are always in the back hexes just because so they won't like walk up and then get hit by a bunch of things. So finally he's around like a later stage, he's valuing the positioning more. He obviously wins, he gets some great Z items, so uh yeah. manages to get second already. And then this just takes a while because you know <laughs> Merrick is a bit of a a tank to say in the least <laughs> yeah and then now in this position it's one-on-one -on -one, so a lot of it is positioning and sort of understanding um what i can play against the other person to hopefully do better yeah and i just wanted to talk about here briefly he picks up that yi even though it might cost him a little bit of interest um interest gold you're not trying to get up to 50 gold or anything here in the late game if you're trying to do anything you you don't have that many rounds left, right? So you might need to roll down next round or the round after to try to hit that Janna too. Um, but his opponent's on one star Yi, so he picked up the Master Yi to try to deny there. And I will often see people like talking about how good it is to deny, or should I be denying? Or is it good to deny, etc. And for most of the game, it's just not that good, right? But mm -hmm. when you're in the late game and you've got like one or two opponents left and you can deny them you know, one of these like four cost or five cost units to getting to two star, that's when it becomes a much more viable and valuable thing to do. And you can see, unfortunately, his opponent hit uh, three star Kindred, uh, which is pretty yeah. tough to deal with. 
And thinking about the guy, the other person, the other player, uh, I would have opted to maybe even consider playing for Mystic, just because it's a shadow comp. All by like the other guy just has a lot better, uh, a lot stronger items and units sort of synergies, and Kindred Three, you know, is like insane. So. Yeah, I mean we've talked a lot about like playing flexibly and playing flexible mm -hmm. items and in particular that kindred is good with flexible items so that's like ga zephyr you know those aren't doing a whole lot for kindred um ga is nice because it prevents her from obviously getting popped and then not contributing anymore but the big thing there is you know she's got um both those tiers for uh that item that i'm definitely gonna remember what it's called Serifs? Serifs, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, she's got Serifs, which is... It's funny because I actually don't like playing Serifs on Kindred, but that that's just me. And um, if you notice here, uh, if you want to go back a little, um, just to show what happened at the beginning of the round, I just think it's important to think. So, obviously, Shadows are really good with Zephyr because... Um, you can Zephyr the back line, which is just annoying to deal with. And it can also Zephyr the front line, so it's immediate access to your back line. And if you see here, um, manages to Zephyr the uh, Braum. And then Yorick actually jumps. And then Leona is popped instantly. So the entire front line is gone. Yeah, there's Leona. Yeah. Instantly dead. She's gone. Yeah. Yorick is in the corner. Over, over there. there. And then it's just straight access to his ear. Yeah. Yeah. And while they're dealing with like some backline units like Mal's, everybody over on the front who's actually doing damage is, you know, dying. So yep. just sort of keep those things in mind when you're positioning against something like that because you don't want to have, you know, from your line of defense basically get uh Yeah. Pushed out. And then Leona, you know, isn't gonna do much at one star at this point against shadows, which just pops instantly. So yeah. So I just wanted to pull up again the the little some screens visual some sense visual there, um, as we kind of like wrap up our conversation about some sins. Uh, I think that game was a, a great example. We got to see uh, a lot of the flexibility that you can have in some sins. We had a spatula, uh, which I think is especially flexible in that comp. You can make wardens. You can make. We made an assassin there. Um, you know, uh, you can't make summoners, but, you know, uh, there's, depending on, since you can play a broad range of units, you can do a broad range of things with the spatula uh, in those comps. So that was like a nice use of that where we didn't end up playing Kha'Zix, but had, you know, Assassin Yorick, mm -hmm. uh, who I was curious because I know, like, I don't play a lot of spatula items on Yorick, but... I'm under the impression I... that he gets the benefit to his minions from some. So I was curious if his minions would jump, uh, but they. they I mean, he well. jumps and then he casts. Right. Yeah. But his minions don't jump. I was curious if his minions would jump when I they mean, spawn. I mean, his minions aren't like immediately <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think it just happens at round start. I don't know. But yeah. uh, I, I personally have not played. I don't think Assassin York, but. Um... Definitely not a uh, something you play out of necessity. Right. It's something that you kind of just end up with and you're like, oh, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no, it's yeah. not the, yeah. Um, and, and I think that's a lot of like what some sin can be, right? It's you're playing what you get and you're playing, you know, to a less ideal end state than a lot of comps, right? You're not looking for like these exact units. You're looking to build out your comp to meet your lobby and to, uh, accentuate what you already have like you talked about the possibility of playing four mystics um since you're already playing two um you know you can you could have dropped like i don't know what would you have dropped wardens there or yeah i would have dropped wardens yeah. for a mystic hopefully in some way to mitigate that uh magic damage but you know six shadow is just super strong and i don't even know if that would do anything necessarily if you don't have that front line it's just hard to fit everything that you want to play right yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot you can do about Six yeah. Shadow Kindred Three. I mean, <laughs> that's just. <laughs> but but yeah, um, I hope that helps like elucidate the comp a little bit for some people. Um, 
again, it can be a little bit confusing uh, because you're not seeing this like tight core comp necessarily like you are with a lot of other things. Uh, let me just take a look here. Also, um, I wanted to mention there was a really good guide, which, uh, well, okay. Um, there is a guide from a really good player that came up on Reddit uh, for some sins in the middle of the week after we'd already decided to do this video i did not read the guide because i didn't want to just like then incorporate everything that they had to say uh, but na who is also like a, a high challenger player uh put out a guide on reddit uh for some sins which you know if you want some additional some sins reading you could check out um, i'll have to read it now because i didn't want to like overly influence my own uh commentary with theirs uh but I think they saw the same thing that we did, which was like a lot of people recently, you know, making these public posts asking, or at least like a handful where they're like, what's the deal with some sins? Um, yeah. So and we'll make on. sure to link that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'll have that in, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we'll have that in the description there. Uh, and we'll have it here on Twitch as well. Yeah. Um, did you, was there anything else you wanted to say in regards to some sins or uh, that you think people should um... know about the comp in general? I guess mostly just you don't need to play Yorick, for example, and right. you also don't need to play Kha'Zix. You right. sort of play what the game is giving you. Uh, but I definitely think like Azir is core if you're going to play some Sins. Um, and then you can sort of go from there depending on which way you want to go about that. And if you're not hitting Azir's or maybe any Summoner's or that sort of comp in general, you can sort of move away from that. And I just wanted to say thank you again to Inflarier for letting us uh, review his VOD today. He was super nice, and definitely go check him out. We'll link him below as well if you just want to click on that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, a big thanks to Inflarier. Um, that was, like, a, a, a nice game to look at. I really, I mean, I know you said that he said it was, like, a it was a for fun thing, but I thought <laughs> that that level to seven straight from six, like, was pretty interesting. I thought... I don't think that's something you'd want to do a lot or all the time, but um, I think like if you're already in a strong position and there's not a lot you want to roll for and your your next goal is going to be to level anyways, there are times maybe where if you feel strong enough versus your lobby that the difference is not going to be a whole lot in terms of income if you can level and then push that win streak there. So it's something to, to think about uh, even if it's not something you do very often, you know? Um, yeah, and just sort of thinking like what your next steps are. And a lot of playing the game is just making these sort of micro decisions. You know, if he leveled and he got punished super hard by the lobby, then it's, you know, could get real ugly real fast. But, you yes. know, he wasn't and he was able to capitalize off of that. And so it turned out fine. Yeah, I think we took like an eight win, eight, nine win streak there, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you, you see it pay benefits. Um, and speaking of uh, the next thing, let's talk about patch notes uh 10.4 just came out and uh we did talk a little bit about uh or nikki and i anyway spoke a little bit about some sin and since we're talking about it on 10.4 we did want to say it's not necessarily as strong on 10.4 as it was on 10.3 some has been around for virtually the entire set right like it's always mm -hmm. all those units have been there all those synergies have been there and it's it hasn't been I think it's like something that would be hard to specifically like nerf or buff because the component units aren't like it's not like nerfing six light or six shadow or six inferno or something where it's like you hit all of the component units with a single thing um obviously like the state of zed is somewhat important and the state of like azir and yorick as, as those have fluctuated have been somewhat important to the comp um kiana hasn't really been touched too much i don't think uh but and Neither has Kha'Zix, I don't think. But yeah. like, so there's been like a little bit of fluctuation in that. But we were talking about it. We think mostly why it's not as strong right now as it has been is that there's like a, a faster, more aggressive meta going on right now where people are like rolling down really hard at six uh, in a lot of cases. And they're trying to like, you know, really hit Kendrid to play that six shadow. Um, and there are, I guess, a number of shadow units at Picasso, Kendrick. Kendrick, Kendred, <laughs> Yorick, and uh, uh, you've got uh, Vagar at three cost as well, and you can hit Malzahar at six pretty easily. Um, so, like, rolling there 
is pretty strong for shadow and shadows being heavily played so you're seeing like some faster lobbies where you're not getting the chance to get to nine you're not getting the chance to like get a Z online before things go down or, or even like you know yorick or annie uh, who you might want to play in the comp are yeah. students that you're not going to see until a little bit later a lot of times also so i think it's still a good comp if you get it like we did in this game like if you're presented with those units the way like we didn't have to roll down really hard for yorick we just got two yorick's we didn't have to roll down super hard for zed we got a zed right if you're getting those units i think it's still playable um but it's certainly not as strong as it has been at points and it is pretty susceptible to this particular meta do you agree yeah, with that and i agree and also just adding the fact that a lot of the meta itself right now is like you said aggressive and when it's super late game everyone who is high rolling or scaling super hard they just do a lot more damage in terms of comparison versus some sin and there's a much um i think the mid game is still weak in terms of having playable three cost units to sort of play but you know ezreal is also an option now and you can play that glacial and if you're not like Basically, I think final some sin can't hold up against like a final like ranger comp or a six shadow comp or like, you know, something super OP. No, uh, and, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, some sins probably doesn't get you first place in a lot of lobbies, yeah. but I think yeah. it's still like a, a decent top four, top comp. four comp. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. a comp that, that'll still get you into the top four uh, if you, like I said, get the units. Um, so to move on to the 10.4 patch notes, um, we just again... There are a lot of places that do a great job going real in depth on these patch notes. We're just kind of going to do the overview here. Um, so we've got some buffs. Um, I know you've in the past played a lot of Soulbound, uh, right? Uh, were you excited yeah. about this buff? Uh, I don't think Senna? it really made any difference, unfortunately. I, I will say a lot of what's going on in these patch notes, even if it does buff or nerf, is very small. Like there, yeah, it's a lot of very small changes. They were mostly uh happy with the state of 10.3 uh and so they didn't do a whole lot there were some interesting changes uh nerf on the nerf side um crystal's a pretty small nerf to crystal uh the bigger nerf to crystal is probably just that Tarek has a half second off of his um one star and two star ultimate time so it's down from like three to two and a half seconds um Whereas Crystal at two units just takes a little more damage. Now they take 110 instead of 100 damage. Um, but Poison is down to like, what is it, 33% uh, increase in the amount of mana it takes to cast from 50%. And that's why we see Saw Singed buffed to try to, I guess, compensate for the fact that he won't be doing as much with Poison now. Uh, and then I think the biggest couple of things were the uh couple of things in other here which uh do you know what's going on with like the stage tracker nikki are you familiar uh, with that one? no i'm not oh so they made it so that up in the top now where you can see like when you've won or lost if you like mouse over that or click on it um you can now see who you played Oh. Uh, previously you couldn't see who you played you used to be able to in set one or like i just kind of one. like accepted that and have yeah. just been playing without it <laughs> no they brought it back so now now you can have a little bit of easier time de determining your future matchups to some extent as well as just like if you're like if you just like lost a round but you were kind of not all the way paying attention you can be like mm -hmm. wow i really got stomped that round who really stomped me and you can go click now and then go look at the comp again and be like oh that's what I got really stopped by or whatever. Um, and then Glacial is a really neat change. Um, they made it so that Glacial previously at two, four, and six units had increasing amounts of percent chance to stun. So I think it was like from 25 up to 45 or something. Um, and they had trouble, I think, making it so that Glacial was like a viable uh, synergy that you wanted to play many of, right? Like pretty much the only time you're playing glacial is like the two glacial units that also happen to be berserkers when you're playing six berserkers like that was basically it um and so what they've done is now there's a 25 percent chance to stun no matter how many glacial units you have two or more and 
the, that percent chance to stun. So when you stun, you now get bonus magic damages done. So every attack is a 25% chance to stun. On stun, you're doing increasing magic damage at two, four, and six synergies. I think it starts at 75, uh, and then it goes up to, uh, I want to say like, is it 350? Yeah, 75, 175, 350 at two, four, and six. So uh, there was also like a slight buff to Olaf um, and uh, Orn probably got the actual biggest buff of all. Um, and that, and he's been buffed a couple of times recently, but he got buffed spell damage now. So I was curious, and I think a lot of people were, to see if this would like revitalize Berserkers in some way. Um, I don't know that it has really though. Uh, I think you can still play it. I yeah. would personally say that like TLDR, uh, similar comps as last patch that could be played. Um, some sins not as good as before. Uh, you can play electric. Electric is, mm -hmm. you know, viable now again just because of Orn and Zed buffs. And you can play Glacial as a mid game transitional sort of um, good way to play your mid game. And yeah, those are just the main, I think, notes to pick, like keep track of. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. I would agree with that. Um, and then the last thing we wanted to talk about today, which we're going to do pretty briefly here, um, we've got a, a top eight again. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're just going to make it kind of brief, and we got a little uh, fun infographic here. Uh, I put this together, and these are the top eight. Uh, some sins, I don't know. These, I think, are things that like when I see them in my shop or when I see them, you know, in my item components, uh, yeah. unused make me think like, okay, maybe these are, maybe this is like a some sins sort of route. These are things that like signal to me, uh, that I might go them and they're not in any real particular order. It's just kind of eight of them today. Uh, yeah. in the future, we might have more ordered lists again, but some sins is so flexible and you're playing so much to what you get that we didn't, I didn't really think there was a great way to put things in like, you know, yeah. uh, first to last order. So none of the numbers mean anything. It's just numbering how many things are on the actual page. In case and, you have trouble counting. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I also want to say that I don't, I personally have different items that I would want to use just because I have a different preference and I have a different value for the Sumsin units. So like GA for sure is pretty good. Tier, you know, is flexible. And I would basically, I'd probably pick Ginsu's and put that somewhere on there. And then Azir is just like my main focus. So, yeah. you know, really flexible, but these are just some things that people like to play. I wouldn't try to say like, go every game, like I'm going to hit Zed every single game. But like, if you do get Zed and you do have like these items, you know, like Ionic is good on Zed too, for example. So right. there's a lot of different things yeah. you can play. Yeah, there are a, a lot of options. Cool. Um, and then just to kind of close up the show, Nikki, was there anything else that, that you wanted to add before we get out of here? Mm, uh, no, not really. I'm excited for set three, basically. And um, I mean, I still enjoy set two, but I really want to see how the game grows in terms of competitive and, you know, it's fun talking about these comps, but I want to see what more is there at, like out there. So yeah, um, set three. I mean, it doesn't just have the new set coming with it. It also has, I think, the promise of competitive, and I think we're supposed to get you know the ability to spectate uh, pretty close to getting competitive. I, I would quote me on that, but in my mind, at least, I think Mort has said some things that tie those together. So uh, a lot of cool stuff potentially coming up uh, for for TFT um mobile mobile, mobile. That, yeah mobile's yeah. already in beta <laughs> right there are people playing mo mobile right now um, on their toilets just yeah no, just kidding <laughs> anywhere you know um so yeah uh and and i just want to thank again in check him out he's on twitter.com slash in uh, his twitch is twitch.tv slash in Probably got something to do with Influrrier on YouTube. I saw him post a video there. So definitely check him out. Thank him for us. Uh, you know, subscribe so you don't get the video at the beginning of when you try to watch his uh, VODs. And uh, as for us, 
we're at discord.me slash top eight podcast. Uh, if you want to hang out, talk about the show, whatever. And then we're also top eight podcast on like Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. So, uh, you know, come check us out. And last but not least, thanks to Roll Music for their song, The Pirate and the Dancer, which we used as usual in our intro. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. And uh, we will see you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye.